ดีค่ะ very very good afternoon indeed to all distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen a very very warm welcome to this year's Fame Lab Thailand competition 2018 coming to you live from the Bangkok Art and Culture Center my name is Pachari Raksa Wong very excited very honored indeed to be your host once again now Fame Lab is a science communications competition that allows candidates participants finalists to present a science concept in three minutes or under and this is the third season it only gets better the participants the contestants are even more talented this year no disrespect to the past contestants but you know with the experience and watching all your peers etc you can only get stronger and you'll see for yourselves up here on this stage but special kind thanks going to the partners out there the Ministry of Science and Technology the National Science Technology and Innovation Policy Office the National National Science and Technology Development Agency. Thank you as well. The National Science Museum and the media partners, True Corporations and The Standard. All right, the final round. Ten finalists will be making their way up here on this stage, showing you what they've got and making it easy for all of you to understand the topic that they have chosen. It's going to be done in a, such a creative, easy to understand way. And don't forget, you get to vote as well for People's Choice Awards. I'll tell you more about that later on. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to check out a video presentation highlighting the 10 finalists from day one at the auditions up until today. If you're ready, let's check out the big screen. เฟรมแล็บไทยแลนด์2018โครงการที่แข่งขันเล่าเรื่องวิทยาศาสตร์ให้สนุกและน่าสนใจภายใน3นาทีเพื่อเฟ้นหาสุดยอดเฟรมแล็บเบอร์หนึ่งเดียวที่จะได้ไปแข่งขันในเฟรมแล็บอินเตอร์เนชั่นแนลน้ำมหากรรมวิทยาศาสตร์เชดแนมไซแอนส์เฟสติวัลณสหราชอาณาจักรโดยการออดิชั่นมีทั้งแบบวิดีโอออดิชั่นและไลฟ์ออดิชั่นก่อนเข้าตื่นเต้นมากครับแต่พอออดิชั่นเสร็จก็รู้สึกเหมือนยกภูเขาจากปกครับรู้สึกสบายใจมากครับถ้าเป็นไปได้ก็อยากเข้าไปดูรอบในในเหมือนกันว่าเป็นยังไงเหมือนกันพิเศษกว่าเดิมที่ในปีนี้เราได้นักวิจัยไอดอลเชอร์ปรามวีเอ็นเคโฟเเป็นพรีเซนเตอร์โครงการเชอร์ต้องพยายามเป็นคนหนึ่งที่จะพูดเรื่องนี้มากขึ้นเรื่อยๆแล้วก็กระจายข่าวสารตรงนี้ออกไปให้เยอะที่สุดเท่าที่ทําได้นะคะและเพราะพลังของโซเชียลมีเดียทำให้ในปีนี้มียอดผู้สมัครเพิ่มขึ้นกว่าปีที่แล้วถึง 100% เปอร์เซ็นต์คือแบบว่าเล่นเป็นบูมครับเห็นเชอปางเป็นคนเปิมโปรโมทครับตัวผมก็ชื่นชอบเชอปางอยู่แล้วก็เลยลองมาสมัครดูผมเป็นคนไม่เก่งประสาทที่สุดพอมีเชอปางเป็นไอดอลผมเลยแบบกล้าที่จะแสดงออกก็ทำอะไรใหม่ๆมากขึ้นพัฒนาตัวเองไปเรื่อยๆครับ This is the picture of the single bacteria We accumulate metals much higher than the more pets Can you feel it? So you use the less in energy because you have to save the energy for the next thing. Rose, all reacting oxygen species. That นี่คือ the ten finalists ในปี2018ที่ได้สิทธิ์เข้าร่วมการอบรมการสื่อสารวิทยาศาสตร์อย่างเข้มข้นจากดรจอนาธานแซนเดอร์สันนักวิทยาศาสตร์ผู้เชี่ยวชาญด้านการผลิตสารคดีวิทยาศาสตร์ชื่อดังจากสหราชอาณาจักรการอบรมนี้คือ Master Class Fame Lab finalists are judged on content, clarity and charisma. Now you can make your own judgments about which is most important. For me, the key is that they need to be delighted. They need to be delighted in their subjects and they need to be able to convey that delight to you. เราได้มีโอกาสเรียนรู้จากคนอื่นรวมทั้งได้รับฟีดแบ็เพื่อเอามานำมาพัฒนาตัวเองนะคะมีอยู่3คีย์ก็คือ what to keep what to change and what to steal ซึ่งเป็น3คีย์ที่น่าสนใจมากมากเลยค่ะได้เห็นประสบการณ์จากรุ่นพี่ที่มาแชร์สิ่งที่แตกต่างกันออกไปจากสิ่งที่เราเคยทำนะครับแล้วก็จะได้เก็บเกี่ยวในสิ่งที่เราไม่เคยเห็นในสิ่งที่เราไม่เคยเจอแล้วนำมาปรับปรุงใช้กับตัวเองในอนาคตครับเฟรมแล็บไม่ใช่แค่การเฟ้นหาผู้ชนะแต่ยังเป็นการขับเคลื่อนและสร้างแรงบันดาลใจให้นักวิทยาศาสตร์ได้สื่อสารเรื่องราวออกไปเพื่อสร้างสังคมแห่งการเรียนรู้อย่างยั่งยืนได้รู้จัก
เพื่อนเพื่อนพี่ๆแล้วก็น้องๆรุ่นใหม่ที่แบบเก่งมากๆเลยอะค่ะจะต้องไปนานคนของชาติที่ดีแน่นอน I have no idea who's going to win this it could be it genuinely could be any of them if they pick the right subject and they deliver it clearly to the best of their ability any single one of them could win this A big round of applause once again for the ten finalists. They'll be up here on this stage shortly. But once again, apart from the main prizes tonight, which is the winner, first runner-up and second runner-up, we do have another special award, and that is the People's Choice Award. You all get to vote. And how do you vote? First of all, this is very important: one person, one vote. Okay, so you can only vote once. So those of you in this auditorium, all you have to do is to take out your phones and. Scan the QR code, which will come up in a short while, and then you can vote. Those of us viewing from the comfort of your home, there will be a QR code up on your screen. You can just scan that and then send in your vote. Those of you joining us on Facebook fan page, whether it's British Council Thailand or True b l u k p a n y a Channel's Facebook fan page, you can just click on the link and vote. Don't forget one. Person one vote, so you might just want to wait until you've seen the presentation for all the ten fame labbers first. Alrighty, now we've got the key persons up here on this stage. They are, of course, the judges. Time for me to introduce them all to you. Oops, sorry about that technical glitch. You see how so excited I am, and I'm like sending electric shock waves to the technical equipment here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Our judges. First of all, we have Mr. Andrew Glass. A big round of applause, welcoming Judge Number One, the Country Director of British Council Thailand. Next, k u n k a n i k a Chen, the Director of the Office of Public Awareness at the National Science Museum. Another big round of applause. And of course, it's like a regular you are here. There we go. Excited for you. There you go, more excitement. Doctor Wara Warong Rak r u y a n g d e d from King m o n g k u t University of Technology, t o n b u r i Now, if you decide to listen in, whether you're at home at this auditorium, if you want to switch to listen in. The Thai version. We do have real-time interpretation happening, and I'd like to thank the interpreters. That is Dr. Nam Chai. She w a t we w a t the director of the Science Communications Division of the National Science and Technology Development Agency, and also thank you as well, Dr. a p i t w a d i b i a t h a m r o n g researcher at the National Electronics and Computer Technology Center or NECTEC. They're doing the Thai version, so that's real-time interpreting for our friends at home view. Wing, uh, um, from the comfort of their couches. All right, let's get the show on the road. I'm sure you're all excited to see now the performances and deliveries of the Fame Labbers. It's now time to introduce Fame Labber number one. The person is a physics student of Mahidol University International College. And he will be sharing with us how to safely send data on the internet. That's very crucial, isn't it? In this day and age, it could make or break your career. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome a p i w i t h e m a t a n Science isn't all about knowing the truth. It's also about how you find out the truth and what else you can do about it. Sending data over the internet is like trying to shout across a crowded room. Because everybody in the room can hear what you are saying, especially the hackers who are going to be out there listening to the information you're trying to send. So, if you want to buy something online and you need to send your credit card number over to an online store, the last thing you want to do is to just directly send the credit card number. What you instead want to do is you want to first encrypt your data and lock it up, so that even if the hackers do get hold of your information. There is nothing that they can do about it to get the actual number. And one system which allows you to do something like this is called the RSA algorithm, and it works sort of like this. 
Firstly, the store will need to generate out two large prime numbers. Now, these two large prime numbers are sort of going to, of going to act as a blueprint, which will be to create the actual tools we need for the encryption of the credit card. Now, we'll take these two prime numbers and multiply them to, with each other to generate something called a public key, which in this case is like a lock, which will be used to encrypt the credit card number that's going to be sent to the shop. Now, we'll take the same two prime numbers and run it through a different function to generate something else called a private key. Now, this private key will basically undo the lock. It will be there so that you can get the actual credit card number back once it's sent to the shop. Now, we won't be sending this key over to anyone, but we'll send this lock over to the customer with the credit card number. Now, we, with the credit card number, can take this number, this lock, and encrypt our credit card number with it, and then send it back to the shop. And note that at this point, even if a hacker does get hold of this, there's nothing that they can do to get the actual credit card number out, because the key is over there and the hackers don't have the key. So then it gets back, sent back to the shop, which, who do have the key and can take the key to unlock the lock and get back out the original credit card number. Safe and easy. But now you're probably looking at ways to break the system, right? Especially because we still need to send this lock over to the customer, right? So couldn't the hacker just somehow get the lock and then undo the process of multiplication to get back to the original two prime numbers and then make their own version of the private key? The answer is no. Because even though it is easy to take those two prime numbers and multiply them to each other to create the lock, the process of reversing it is actually really difficult. Even if you have the best of computers, if you just have the lock, it will take you years to reverse the process to get back to the original two prime numbers, especially when those prime numbers can be thousands of digits long. And this is where mathematics really helps us in our daily lives. And so the next time you ever buy something online, think in mathematics that it works. Thank you. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Fame Labber number one, raising the bar quite high there. Now, um, he's presented in three minutes, and now we're going to pass things over to this side, the judges. The judges have two minutes to ask. We're going to fix that for all of you in just a short while. I know that the team's working on it, but yes, it's getting quite heated up here, isn't it? Um, judges, you've got two minutes to ask your questions, and your time starts now. Um. Okay. My bad. I believe it was me. <laughs> My bad. My sincere apologies for that. Let's, let's um, stop the clock and let's start again here, okay? I think, um, okay, there we go. So the clock now is set for two minutes. The judges' time starts now. Um, first of all, it's very nice and clear presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to congratulate you as well. Um, so I was wondering, when you say that it's so difficult to trace back to the prime number, why, why is it so difficult and what makes it so difficult? OK, so the reason that's difficult is because the best algorithm to trace back to the original prime number now that we have is to just brute force and check with every prime number. I can give you sort of an example of it. Um, if someone has a calculator, you can get an actual calculator out, right? Um, if I just tell you, like, with two digits, something like 37 times 79, that's really easy to calculate, right? Just press the number, right? But if instead I just told you something like, I have a number 2047, and I want you to find which two prime numbers multiply to give you that number. That's, that's a lot more difficult to do, right? Like, if you start now, like, the next Fame Lab talk will probably start by the time you finish, right? So the, that, that just gives a sense of how much more difficult it is to reverse the process. And now we're not talking about prime numbers with two digits. We're talking about prime numbers with thousands of digits that we actually use. So it just becomes a lot harder to do. Can Andrew, you comprehended every bit of that. Absolutely. <laughs> I did, too. <laughs> and I did the calculations. No, I loved your presentation. Uh, you. Beautifully clear. I love the props as well. Thank you. I mean, some, it seems that some people regularly get hacked into and other people don't. The people mm. who get hacked into regularly, what, what are they doing wrong? Um, that would just become maybe possibly more about like things like them not being able to, like using a common password for every website, right? Because 
like even though like there is such systems out there, there still be websites out there who might use a different system, and might might be systems with more flaws and stuff. And that could be like where the hackers actually like exploit, for example. We've got ten more, ten more seconds. Well, in that case, I think I would just um, say well, con congratulations. That's really good presentation. Yeah. You really make me understand better, you know, how uh, my credit card and my security code is secure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Fame Labber One. <laughs> so poised. And he took the question so graciously, but standing so close to him here, I can see the sweat building up on his forehead. I mean, who would not be, right? I mean, the glare of the spotlight here, but that was a really good start. Let's move on now to fame labber number two. She's a science teacher of Nakhon Payap International School. And today she's going to tell us the story about food Armageddon. What's that about? Well, let's go find out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Kun Tanyawan Krishnawan. Science is fashion because when I go to work every morning, in front of the classroom is my runway. The global population is increasing rapidly. Some scientists warn that we will hit peak phosphorus production. take such a long time. Another factor that makes phosphorus, it limits for the phosphorus conservation is how plants absorb phosphorus. Let's just assume that I have 100% of a dose of phosphorus. And then when the phosphorus goes to the plants, look. Only 15% of phosphorus is absorbed by plant roots, and the rest will, be en will end up in the ocean where it is so hard to recover. But there's a, there's a choice. Researchers are developing some uh, method that increases the efficiency of phosphorus absorption by using fungi. A symbiotic rela relationship between fungi and plant roots called mycorrhizae. So when the, um, normally, when the plant roots absorb the phosphorus, it will absorb within one millimeter, which surrounds it. But this help of fungi, it can go beyond the roots limit to absorb the, plant, absorb the phosphorus and make it available to plant root. And that, that plant roots will get nutrients back from the plants as well. Therefore, introducing this method to the, to the plant production can increase the production of phosphorus in plants too. This method gives a humankind a natural way to conserve this natural, uh, natural resource. This help of mycorrhizae can help us and our next generation will have food for the future. Thank you for listening. Food stability, food security, a very important topic indeed. Thank you very much, Fame Labber number two. Over to the judges. Your two minutes starts now. So feel, real, feel really good right now? Yes, so <laughs> relieved. <laughs> so you mentioned about the um, 
the fungi can really help um, in increasing the absorption. Yes. What is the real mechanism right there to really increase, you know, like how does it work? Because of the plant roots, normally it will absorb phosphorus by itself. But it's, uh, it can absorb only 15%, as I show from my example. But with this help of mycorrhizae, it, because of it's so small, so it can go further to absorb uh, the phosphorus that gets stuck in the, so in the soil. Uh -huh. So they can keep, keep phosphorus in plant more than normal. They have more surface. Yes. They use the surface, uh, kind of like the, the, the benefit of surface absorption. Thank you. Uh, I, I think it's very interesting. Thank uh, you. My question is, well, why fungi? And is there anything else that might be better? Thank you for this question. I really want to say like this answer because uh, we have um, experiment before that in the past time, uh, people, they collect the phosphorus from urine, like our urine, because uh, we've, uh, we, we drain every day. But they found from that, that experiment, so they boil the, the urine and then they can get the pure phosphorus. But the, uh, the problem is when we collect the, the urine, it's amount of the phosphorus that we get from the urine, it's not enough for, because we use a lot, so it's not enough. And also another problem of that urine is like, because of, uh, from the toilet, because they don't have the separated system, so it's hard to get it. Thank you very much to the judges there. Unfortunately, no more time, but, <laughs> but we do have many more contestants to make their way up on stage so you can save the questions for them. And thank you very much to you. Good luck. You're looking fantastic on the screen here. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Once again, ka, 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 good luck. Ka, ka, ka. Don't forget, you can vote for People's Choice Award, one person, one vote, but not just yet, all right? Because we might want to vote towards the end after we've witnessed all the 10 Fame Labbers on the stage. Let's move on now to Fame Labber number three. She's a lecturer and researcher of Konkan University. And um, she's going to be telling you what she thinks about science. And her topic is bags, scissors, and the future of humans. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Apon Wang Wiwatsin. Science is exploring the wonders of nature. It was a war between bacteria and virus when humans took bacteria's weapons and turned it into an innovative tool that can help millions of people and can change the future of humankind. This tool is called CRISPR-Cas9, and CRISPR is a legacy name for the bacteria's weapons, and Cas9 is a molecular scissors that can cut a genetic code. The code of life with instructions of how to make an organism. So if we can make some change to this code, then maybe we can change something about an organism. But these scissors need to have a guide to kind of tell it where to do the cut. For bacteria, this guy comes from the previous fight with the virus. So when the new virus come in with the genetic code, this bit there, go there, and then check if the sequence match. And if so, then chop, the virus is gone. If this cut happened in humans, in human cells, in human code of life, the body would go panic, and it would try to fix this code, but it would make error. And this error can mess up the code. So say if this bit of code caused a disease, then messing it up a bit might help the patients. Also, we can trick the cell a little bit and say, hey, look, we got this code here, and it kind of matched exactly to your broken bit. So, Maybe this one can go over here, right? So with this, we just add an extra chunk of code to the code of life. And this chunk might say, now produce some useful molecules. Now for the real use in humans, the problem is the scissors and the guy is actually quite fragile. So we need to put them in some kind of bags with a postal address that they can get them to the right organs, to the bit that actually need fixing. Now, we have the bags that could be nanoparticles, man-made, or a virus that cannot cause disease. So, now we have scissors, we have the guide, and we have the bags. 
and combine these together, there's so many things we can do. What about the pigs that will not get infected with deadly virus? What about vegetables that won't go brown? What about changing immune system to kill cancer cells? And what about design babies to be smart, pretty, and good at music? <laughs> But is it acceptable to change a baby? I don't think it's a good answer for that question. But science and society need to get together, and we can all be a guardian for good use of this powerful technology. But one thing is clear: the war between bacteria and the virus, and the very basic knowledge we've learned from it, has become a tool that can change the world. So stay curious, go explore the world, and ask questions and seek for answers. Thank you. A good tactic to win the audience's heart is to use humor. I heard a bit of a, a laughter out here. We'll see if she's going to win your vote or not. Don't forget People's <laughs> Choice Awards and a kiss too. There you go, judges. Two minutes. Well, congratulations! You certainly chose an ambitious topic there. Incredibly complicated, but you made it very clear. Well done. Um, you. You just ask. What do you think will be the single most important change to our lives, maybe in the next, say, 10 years, as a result of this research? If you could just name one. About this technique, or mm. for this technique, I think it's in terms of the effect on the um, the area beyond the science. So right now, it's already made a huge effect on science. So it speed up research quite a lot. It make people's life inside a lot easier. Outside the science, I think it's in terms of the economics. So as I say, you can improve the the pigs to be resistant to virus. You can improve the crops. Is that going to be available to everyone, or is that going to, going to be available to like the rich ones, or limit to some company with some patents? So I think it's that kind of interpretations that can go outside the science, and that's actually why I chose this topic. Thank you. So if um, the general public, you know. Um, Hear about this talk, and they think that it's interesting, but they feel like there is some risk, or that mm. there might be some cha chance of um, these sisters make some mistakes. Exactly. What yeah. would you tell them? Um, actually, I think scientists has been really, really careful before they get this system out into like use with real humans. Um, I talk about the pigs and the vegetable. They already tried that in the lab, and it looked like it's working, but. The person who did the research would say it would probably take a couple of or a few years before this can get to the market. So that would go through a lot of safety testing before it can actually go out. Quick question: Can Thai people do it? Yes, I know some wow. labs already work on it. A lot of Thai people, a lot of Thai scientists. I think it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, especially like for the new generations or people who like. Active in that research and try to look for something new because this technique actually come to light in about five years ago, Great so it's really really that. new. Good yeah. re revelation revelations here. Thank you yeah. very much for Thank sending you. us good news. Thank, Thank you. you, Fame Labber number three. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. All right, let's move on now to Fame Labba number four. She's a medical student of the Faculty of Medicine at Konkan University, and she's going to tell us the story of what it means to hit your heart. Hit your heart, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Soramon Chai Shan. Ka. Science is about understanding, and with a better understanding, we can make an advanced improvement. Dear passengers, welcome on board the exclusive Liver Cruise. I am Nit Noi, and today I'm going to be your tour guide to one of the most fascinating liver in human body. Yes, the heart. We all know that exercise is good for the heart, right? But today I want to be a little bit more specific on which type of the exercise is the best option for your heart. So, ladies and gentlemen. Please fasten your seat belt because the exploring journey is about to begin. Do do. Now we are leaving the first station to attend the right side of the liver. Please take a look outside the windows. Oh, there's so many beautiful sceneries out there. 
Now, we just arrived at the transit. This transit has a very special name, the lungs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any trash in your hand, please give it to our janitors. We need to clean up our crews here. And now, we're moving to the left side of the liver. Can you feel that? It's a little bit shaky, isn't it? It's a little bit shaky because now we just reached the terminal part of the journey. Are you ready to be sent back? Are you ready to be squeezed out? Are you ready? Finally, we're back to the first station, and that's the end of our journey. As you can see, crews traveling in the liver, it's just like blood circulating in the heart. Normally, blood from all parts of the body start entering the right side of the heart, being sent to lungs for gas exchange, getting back to the left side before getting squeezed out to supply oxygen to wider organs. In order to improve the carrying capacity and the pumping function of the heart, an exercise called High Intensity Interval Training, or called for short as HIT, is considered to be very effective. HIT basically composed of two alternating phases between high-intense cardio exercise and a short resting period. During a high-intense cardio exercise, your heart is going up as high as 90 percentages of your maximum heart rate. Ideally, you would want to keep that level of heart rate throughout the exercise, but practically, it's just impossible. That's the reason why a short resting period is also very important. It allows your heart to store blood for itself before attending the intense period again. Only 30 minutes of HIIT exercise per week, you can have a lifelong healthy heart. Your heart muscle will become more strengthened and your heart chamber will get bigger. Want to have a healthy heart? It all starts with yourself, so just hit it. Thank you for joining the journey. Get exercising, get hitting. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, hit it. Yeah. Hit it, guys. All right, hit it, judges. Two minutes. Hit it. <laughs> hit it. Yeah, of course. So, um, very good recommendations, actually. You have 30 minutes for the long and the short uh, exercise of the pulse. Can, can you give the recommended numbers for long period of time and short period of time right there? Okay. So... so uh, the HIIT exercise is the exercise which like designed for a shorter time. Normally, we all have heard that you need 30 minutes of exercise once and five times a week. But that's for the moderate level cardio exercise, which means your heart needs to hit only 70 percentages of the maximum heart rate, which is different from HIIT because HIIT, you need to reach up to 90 percentages of your maximum heart rate, but you do it alternate with a short resting period. And it takes just only like 30 minutes in total for entire week. Like you could just divide it into 10 minutes for one day, three times a week. It's very time saving, five times less in comparison to the conventional cardio exercise. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Very promising. More questions from the judge. Just make me curious about a marathon runner. What would happen to the heart? Um, for the marathon runner, um, I think marathon runner is kind of exercise which is not very intense, but longer period. So I think the heart rate is supposed to reach about 60 or 70 percentages. So it should be categorized as a part of moderate level cardio exercise. Uh -huh, so Cardio exercise for marathon running is also improve the heart, carrying capacity and pumping function as well, but not as much as HIIT exercise and not as time-saving as HIIT exercise. Mm -hmm. And do you think we should, should we wear these um, appliances and things to measure it while we're doing exercise or does that just distract us? Well, I think if you can get uh, some digital clock to measure the heart rate during exercise, that would be great. But it's a little bit pricey, you know? <laughs> so there are several options that you can do. You can just hit the gym, run on treadmill. They will also have an option which can count your heart rate. Or you can just open on YouTube and say, hit exercise. They will have exercise designed for you. Or you could just say, five, uh, 150 beat per minute music. And you just dance, of course, 
according to that beat. Yeah, that will do as well. Cheaper, much cheaper. All right, some very cool suggestions there. Very friendly to the pocket as well. Thank you very much, and good luck to you, Fame you Labber number four. <laughs> we will move right on to Fame Labber number five. He is a biology student at the Faculty of Science at Mahidon University. Now he's going to be sharing with us. His presentation is entitled "Root Heroes." Feeding the future, ladies and gentlemen. Next, we bring on stage Mr. Wacherin Anwed. Science is nature. The more you learn about science, the more you know about nature. <laughs> the future. When you hear this word, what do you think? A world where people travel back in time to pet dinosaurs and have thoughtful conversation with aliens. No, in reality, the world is much darker than that. The world is increasing population and climate changing that are owing enough food a great challenge. The world is starving. Luckily, however, scientists have found the heroes we need. Introducing the loose. Our pet loose system is something we have overlooked since day one of the Greek culture. We all know that. Roots can absorb nutrients and water in the plants. You know, a good root system will allow it to use limited resources in the soil to the fullest potential. Think of it this way: Suppose you are a tree and your arms are the roots. Of course, you can walk to your food. You can only reach for it with your root hands. So, if you have long arms or a deep root system, you can reach the nutrients such as nitrogen that are further underground. But if you have a short arm or a shallow root system, you can only reach the nutrients like phosphorus that are closer to the surface. And did you know, when plants use the minerals in the soil, they enter a cycle which allows them to use these minerals again and again. Resulting in the more fertile soil. Not only that, roots help the soil retain water and moisture, allowing it to last two periods of drought. Roots also help with the soil with the adhesion of the soil, making it not too tight and allowing it to bed. In other words, roots can turn barren soil into fertile soil that plants need, and can free mankind. We can apply our knowledge of roots to integrated agriculture. We've combined a variety of plants and a variety of root system. This results in the nutrients getting more absorbed, and the <coughs> and the full capacity of the land get used. Uh, so, after plants get used, the nutrients that enter the plant cycle. We've now list the plants resulting in the more In the lower need for fertilizer and water, this also means a lower level of chemical contamination in the environment. This, was <coughs> this type of integrated agriculture will allow us to prevent from means and environmental problems in the world. There is no denying that a food crisis is something we all may have to face in the future. If we manage our resources well, it is possible for all of us to happily stay on this planet for a long, long time. But it is up to us, all of us, to cooperate and free this world. Together, we can change the world. Thank you. Root heroes. Over to the judges now. Once again, you've got two minutes. Uh, you make me feel. Um, you make me see the importance of roots, and I have to go back yeah. to check all the roots of my, you know, plants, how they look like. That's going to be a good uh, idea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wonder if uh, at this moment scientists is working on, you know, some research on roots. Yes, we got the light, but it's not that too much. So we have to work on it a lot, a lot more. Yes. Uh, what what kind of thing they are working on? I mean, like, could can, could can we improve the roots? I mean. uh, maybe we we have to. Uh, now we're working on the how to use the roots to help to uh, enhance the productivity of the uh, production of the plants. Yes, or stuff like that. And that's the key of the that. 
the benefits of the lose. Yes. One more precious minute left. If any of the other judges would like to pose a question to Fame Labber number five. Um, so, do you, can you name plants that would you recommend to really, you know, be like a plant that has a lot of roots that can, you know, be a good food in the future? Uh, well, the thing is, uh, different kind of plants have different types of roots. So. Uh, I cannot tell you that what plants have the, the best system of the loose. So if you want to use the nutrients more effective, you have to plant the different types of plants that have different types of loose. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I guess this is another bad consequence of deforestation, is it? When you're cutting down trees, etc., then this will have another negative consequence. Yeah. <coughs> so can you repeat your question again? Yeah, I mean, when we think about the negative consequences of deforestation, then what you're talking about is another consequence of that. Is it? Uh. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time here. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry, question wasn't right I there. think in a way I did save him, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so... He's a he root hero, but I'll be your hero. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big oh, round of applause for Faye Plaba. Number five there, halfway through. Don't forget, we do have the People's Choice Award. You can vote for your very favorite, and you know how to vote, right? But let me just remind you again, there's a QR code that's up on the screen. Wow, there it is. So the audience here at this auditorium, scan that and place your vote. Viewers watching our live feed at home, what you do is there's a QR code right there on your monitor, but on Facebook, fan page we're streaming live there you click on the link now voting will be closed after the group interview so after we see all the presentations of the 10 fame labbers and we're halfway through we're going to bring everybody up we'll interview them you'll still have time then and then after that interview session we will close the voting for people's choice award once again one person one vote so you're only allowed to vote once. Okay, let's move on now to Fame Labber number six. Now, this person is a researcher at the National Nanotechnology Center here in Thailand. And um, the person is going to shed light about fuel from the sun. Lots of fuel from the sun now because it's just so hot outside, apart from the rain that chucked down earlier today. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Pong Kan Dak. Science is the solution of everything in life. If God exists, I'm sure this is what she would say. What happened? The ice cap is melting, and all the dolphins are covered in oil. And why would you even use oil? I gave you the sun. She has a point there, because an hour of sunlight hitting the surface of the Earth can power the entire world for a year. But it's never the quantity that is a problem. It's how to store the energy so you can use it when the sun is not shining. Plants have been storing energy since before it was cool. Using a process called photosynthesis, plants can make sugar, which is the basis of food for all the living things. But can we also photo photosynthesize, you think? Yes, because artificial photosynthesis is an active field of research. Kind of like solar cell, we use a material called semiconductor to capture solar energy and then convert it to electrical energy. Then we can use this electrical energy to drive chemical reaction. This means we can store solar energy into a form of chemical, which can be used anytime and anywhere. The physics behind artificial photosynthesis lies in the material, semiconductor. Just like its name, semiconductor, it's not a good conductor because unlike metal, whose electrons are free to move around everywhere, semiconductor has a gap in its energy structure. This gap prevents electrons 
from moving around. But when we shine light on it, the light particle can transfer its energy to the electron. And if the energy is enough, the electrons can hop across this gap. And now the electron is free to move around. It's not just free, it's also super energetic, kind of like me after a coffee. So that's the best time to trick your electron into doing some work. In this case, is to drive chemical reaction. Artificial photosynthesis has been used for a reaction like water splitting, which make hydrogen gas. This is because hydrogen is very important. Chemicals, and it's also a clean fuel. You can use hydrogen to power your trucks, your trains, or even buildings by filling it in a device called fuel cells, which convert hydrogen into electricity and produce only water as the byproduct. This is the cleanest fuel you can ever find. But in the future, we're hoping to use artificial photosynthesis to drive carbon dioxide conversion to make long-chain hydrocarbons and chemicals. This is how we're going to scrub that dirty carbon dioxide from our atmosphere and then make chemicals out of it. Now we no longer have to rely on fossil sources. This technology is paving a way for a cleaner future. Let's build upon this together so we can finally heal our planet. Thank you. We all agree and approve of that cleaner future, don't we, judges? Definitely, a cleaner future is the way to go. Questions, please. How f I really like your presentation. Thank you. How far off is the future? So actually, the artificial photosynthesis for hydrogen production has been used in Hawaii, which makes a lot of sense because Hawaii, first, they don't have a lot of uh, re energy resource except the sun and they do care a lot about their environment. And they are very rich. So this technology, the problem right now is it costs a lot. So that means that researchers like us in engineering would help by uh, improving this technology so it would climb the learning curve and eventually it should be cheaper for everyone. So um, what's the cost in comparison to just um, simple solar cell? And another question is, um, now the scientist is working on improving it. Uh, what's the technology in improving it? I'm so just curious. You can kind of think of this as like solar cell plus the device that convert electricity to water. So it's not really solar cell because solar cell only harvests the energy, but you use it and it's gone. So we have to store it in a case when there's no sun or when it's during the night. So this is actually not replacing solar cell, it's complementary to solar cell. And what makes it better is to improving the material efficiency. So there's always losses during the process, and that can be improved upon uh, improving the material, improving the engineering, and so on. Just a quick thing, um, can Thai people do it? This that's a great question because that was my thesis. So are there a lot of people that are doing this current research? Actually, because there's quite a number of researchers in Thailand. We're working on little part. So this is a very difficult problem. And it requires a tons of scientists to actually look at different parts. And eventually, we piece them together. And hopefully, they all work. But she's definitely going to be a very important part of those pieces that she was going, that she was talking about to make sure it works. A cleaner future. We will hope that your work <laughs> will give us a cleaner future. Thank you very much and good luck to you, Dr. Fong Kan. She definitely knows what she's talking about. Next, we move on now to Fame Labber number seven. He's a biochemistry lecturer at Nareyasuan University. And um, he's going to tell us about rediscovering our younger selves. That sounds quite nifty there. Our younger selves. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sarawut Satyakawi. Sign. Based on my experience, I would say Science can turn imaginative ideas into reality. Will you believe me if I say you can stay forever young? Many of you may disagree thinking that this is only a plot in sci-fi movies. But actually, aging revolution is happening here and now. 
Before you get there, come walk with me through the journey of aging. Starting from birth, every one of us goes through stages of childhood, reaching adult life and ending up in a ripe old age. Through life, we've been exposed to external stresses such as UV radiation, pollution, infections, as well as internal ones caused by negative feelings like anger, fear, and worry, or even from our lifestyle, smoking, drinking, or eating high-calorie diets. We are fine as long as our body can recover quickly from these stresses. But once it loses this ability, you can kiss goodbye to your youth. Let me show you a clear picture of what's going on inside our body. Think of it as the big factory filled with workers in the form of cells. Healthy cells work tirelessly 24-7. Sadly, stress from work affects the performance. The one who can't stand it leaves the job and are replaced by new workers to keep the factory running. The changing in workers represent the recovery process happening inside our body. However, some workers become lazy, avoiding their work but refuse to quit. These guys are known as the senescents. The remaining workers that need to work harder to fulfill all the duty, the senescents leave behind. Without what can see, the factory can't recruit new workers. At one point, the hardworking guys also turn into the senescents. Doomsday will surely fall upon the factory if the situation continues. This scenario reflects the losing ability of the body to recover, resulting in aging. Too bad, the factory doesn't have effective measurement to deal with the senescence. It needs to hire an inspector named Senolytics Compound, who specializes in ident oh, oh, no. identifying the black sheep among the group. Also, with his persuasive skill, he can make the senescence reside in peace. Once new workers come in, filling their places, the factory can again return to its full working capacity. The senescence removal by Xenolytics compounds has already been a success in the lab. This marks a start of rejuvenation process, and now longevity is no longer a daydream. So the question is, how do you plan to spend the rest of your life in a younger body? Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you as well. Three minutes is up, and now it's two minutes for the judges. So, I, I think it's very interesting to really see that it's, I, I can understand the process very well. So, what, what, what are the key uh, mechanism of, you know, like a, when we want to get the new cells to really come and replace the, you know, yeah. bad cells? Like, okay. is, is there something we can do to really, you know, increase more rejuvenation? Um, what, what happens if you increase um, too many cells? Cancer, right? Right. Yes, that's it. The thing is, like, um, in our body, we have um, a balance in the cells, right? So if one dies, one replaces or something like that. But the thing is, like, when, um, when we age, you know, we have um, the accumulation of um, senescence. But the senescence, they are very, very stubborn cells. They, they don't want to die. They don't want to get the suicide themselves and then get replaced. So they just stay there. When we have um, less and less um, a cell that can, can work, can be function, it means like, you know, those cells need to work harder. And also, they can turn into senescence as well. But if we can remove the senescence, we can um, replace um, them with a new cell. Yeah. Good, ba good balance is very important. Yes, that's right. So th actually, that is my question now. Okay, <laughs> because I'm interested to know how okay. can I stay young? Right, <laughs> everyone, everyone, I think everyone, right? You want to stay young forever, yes. But, um, you know, like, just like a few years, they discovered that we can turn a very old mice into a very young mice by removing senescence. We can also do that by using um, the Thai herb as well. But because, like, at the moment, uh, my team is um, um, searching for uh, chemicals in herbs that can you know, mimics that, that kind of drug to remove the senescence. Actually, like, to, pers to persuade the, the, the senescence cell into um, suicide, then we can replace it with a new cell. So 
so okay. So Unfortunately, no yes. You know what? I'm, Sorry, I'm with you. I have ten thousand <laughs> questions for him backstage. All right. All right. Thank Don't you very much. Thank you. Talking about our younger selves. The next person about to come on this stage happens to be the youngest of all the finalists that made it to this final round. 18-year-old student from Khaonggan Wittiyayon School. He has a deep passion for science and he's going to be telling us about mental suicide. <gasps> That's very interesting, isn't it? Let's bring on Tirapong Pontu, mental suicide, guys. Science is the way that we learn everything in our everyday life, unconsciously. Just enjoy and learn. What can cost someone <laughs> to consider committing suicide? Alan Turing, who broke the German Enigma code in World War II, in the work of code breaker, shot in the war by two years and saved Cortez's life. But at the end of his life, he decided to commit suicide, just because that the social label him as a gay. Did he deserve it? We always try to label a person with our perspective without caring them. We try to value everything in this world without looking deeply inside, including the gender issue. We try to label them as positive or the negative. So with the same action they have done, the different result will range due to the different opinion that we gave on someone. Is the person born with a sexual attraction towards the same gender, or those attractions cultivated by upbringing, culture, or lifestyle choice? It can be explained by epigenetic. Epigenetic is how the nature and nurture interact to human being. Nature is an unchangeable blueprint of our DNA inside the chromosome. And nurture is the environment that makes us to be us. Normally, our body will be controlled by the thing inside our body called chromosome, which scatter around in every part of our body. It's gonna specify hereditary characteristic of our body. It gonna tell that we have black hair, dark skin, or even your sex. And inside the chromosome, there will be the thing inside called DNA. But DNA, he not, cannot solo himself alone. He has to rely on Mr. Ribosome. Mr. Ribosome gonna come and catch him, but he is too big. So he has to transform himself into the smaller one called RNA, which will be able to catch by Mr. Ribosome. Mr. Ribosome gonna translate all the way down, then signal to your body how to respond like. Sound easy, right? But in fact, it's not. Because sometimes there will be the chemical tag to label or in your DNA to activate or deactivate the NDA function. And how those chemical tags come from? Of course, it comes from the nurture or the environment that you are facing, like the stress or the love. So it wouldn't be exaggeration to say that our life is the product of nature and nurture partly involved as epigenetic. And how those epigenetic affect the sexual attraction of us? Of course, there will be the chemical tag to label on your sexual attraction DNA. I mean the DNA part which absorbs the sexual hormone. So what your gender will be, it is 50 in 50. 50% 50 on your chromosome to tell what the sex of yours. And 50% on all of you guys to label the tag on someone or not. Is it the time yet for ourselves to commit suicide to our bad perspective? Let Turing's life be an example don't let the history repeat itself. Because now today, there is no gender polarity. There is just human equality. Thank you. Very impressed. I'm sure the judges were equally impressed. Let's hear the questions now. So the nurture create some chemicals to really block yes, or it, boost? It produce some methyl group of chemical come from hydrogen and carbon in your cells and it's gonna absorb and affect the epigenetic to label on your DNA. It may like uh, prevent the ribosome to translate or may prevent the DNA transform uh, system to not cannot transform anymore or it's maybe sometime make our DNA tight more tightly with the protein or something like that it's gonna some kind of prevent and also sometime it's gonna activate more yeah so do we do people do scientists really understand this process of the chemical reaction so that they can decide you know what sort of we, we, we cannot we cannot able we cannot be able to control it yet because it is uh, happen unconsciously under our uh, 
certain environment that we're facing. Yeah. So, um, in that case, does it, well, meditation or kind of relaxation, uh, does it work that way? I mean, to help um, um, it, people? It, it can be, be also maintain your stress or maybe reduce your stress that don't, don't bring it up and it's gonna get to your health, get to your environment and it's gonna cause a benefit, yeah. Yeah, it's some kind of like you live in the good environment. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, you're, I mean, your subject is mental suicide. Yeah, so I, I wonder I whether we, uh, what, what do we do to have our own kind of uh, mental suicide? Oh, can oh. we avoid that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Can, can, can we avoid that? Yeah. Just some kind of like live in a good environment don't be too much stress or relax yourself, be yourself, be your best self. Yeah, that's it. All right, relax, sit back, enjoy, no stressing. You're stressing though, are you? Of no. course not. <laughs> of course not. All right, another big round of applause for our youngest finalist there and his presentation on mental suicide. Wow. Now we're going to head on to the ninth fame labber. You see, time flies when you're having so much fun. Can't we have like 20 in the finals? No? I mean, I'm enjoying myself so much here. I don't think the judges are though, because you know, they've got the hard job to do. All right, our next contestant, Fame Labber number nine, is a mechanical engineering student of King Mongkut's University of Technology, Tonburi. And um, the topic is orthodontics and smart materials. Let's bring on Pasawan Zanchai. Well, I believe that science is not something very difficult with your own idea, we can make something impossible possible. Good evening. I know you guys have been listening to a lot of information today. Now I want you guys to sit back and relax a bit. Smile. Give yourself a big smile. <laughs> yeah, and today I'd like to give you guys a talk about something with your smile. Your teeth. Yes, your teeth. I like your smile, by the way. <laughs> so. You know, I, I know that a lot of you guys have been familiar with orthodontics. Some of, maybe some of you, some of your friends, have got the braces on. And those people, they have to check up with their dentist once a month in order to tighten up their aqua up a bit and to keep their teeth moving. And you know what? It hurts. It hurts, right? But, you know, keeping your teeth moving, it hurts. And those people, they can barely eat the first three days. They can barely eat a couple of like the couple and third three days after meeting the dentist. But have you ever known that your teeth don't actually move for the whole period of one month? They have to wait to see the doctor again. They actually move just three or four days and then they literally stop. They literally stop. Of course no one ever told you that. No doctor in the world would ever told you that. Why? I'll get back to that later. First of all, I would, I would like to give you guys some three keys of how dentists want to move your teeth. First of all, they want to move your teeth using as small force as possible. They want to move your teeth using as constant speed as possible. And they want to move your teeth physiologically. And by these ways, your teeth will actually move slowly physiologically. You not get gum injury, you not damage your tooth, and also your tooth root. But this doesn't work well with the conventional stainless steel arcwires. As you can see it here, it probably loosen up the tensions real fast, like the first three days after you're getting this wire tightened up. So it doesn't work. But with the introduction of a smart material, now we have a nickel titanium arc wire, which is very elastic. And what's so smart about this? Because it is very elastic. No matter how hard I bend it, no matter how hard it deforms, it's always going to return to their original shape. And we call it a super elastic behavior. And when the doctor tighten up this wire, it will release such a low amount of force over a long period of time, which means that your teeth will actually move for the whole period of one month, non-stop, and you will not feel any pain at all since it releases such a low amount of force. So next time, if you want to get the braces up, ask your dentist, and do you have a nickel titanium arc wire? Since this wire could reduce the re duration of the treatment. And, you know, I want to say, Something to you guys real quick. Please, please take good care of your oral health. 
since your smile deserves the best care. Thank you for your attention. Can, can we see that smile once again? That smile, can you flash it for all of us? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Is that smile going to melt your heart? Is that smile going to make you vote for him? All right, questions. Yes, questions, Dr. O. Let's go right into it. Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> questions, judges. I, le I learned so much in those three minutes then. I knew nothing about this subject at all before. Um, so this material, if you bite an olive or you bite a nut and you bite it badly, is it resistant? Will it, will it yeah, still break your tooth? Or? Of course, it's a really strong material, even though it's very super elastic. Mm. It has a very high, oh, I'm sorry, it's hard to pick it up. <laughs> oh, sure, I'll just leave it. <laughs> so this material actually is really strong, even though it sounds like it's very elastic. And it is also, this material is also biocompatibility, which will work great with your mouth. Um, can, I mean, uh, do we use it for other purpose, this oh, material? Yeah. Of course, like nickel titanium has been widely used in all kinds of medical device, from a heart valve or like a stent, like some, some met metallic tube that you insert it to expand your, your vascular and all kind of medical device, not only for orthodontics. So how does it work to really control, you know, like the time that is going back to the original shape? Um, that's, that's quite interesting that you said that, you know, you can control with the constant force and constant time. Yeah. How, how does it work? Well, actually, this wire has a special crystal structure, which I'll say like the B phase or A phase, which will can transform from A to B or you, I would say uh, Austin I, or Martin Sai, if you may wish. So we'll transform from phase A to B without losing any energy. So when you, when you tighten this wire up, it will, it will change this material to phase B, and it will try as hard as to return back to phase A. Like it's like some natural things about this material. That's why it was so special about it. So we actually can control it between the two phases yes. right there. Wow. Using like a temperature. Can you do it? To say that. What? Can you do that? Uh, yeah, of course, because I'm an of engineer. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, time is up. But yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Another big round of applause for Fame Labber. <laughs> Number nine, good luck to you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the final contestant is about to come up on this stage. And don't forget, you still have time to vote because we will bring everybody up and we'll do a last final interview and then we will close the voting. But now, let's go on and hear it from Fame Labber number 10, a pharmaceutical science student of Konkan University. The topic is the secret of our lives. Let's welcome Ms. Manchari Sang Meung. Science is the key to life. Science is the key to everything. What if I were to tell you that this sticky rice in my hand is actually the key to our lives? I'm not talking about the rice itself, but its delightful stickiness is in fact similar to something of the cardinal importance in our body, guiding us since we were born. This secret is called the EP genomes. All the cells in our bodies contain the same sequence of DNA. However, it has different structure and functions. So in the liver cells or the skin cell or muscle cells has a different DNA structures and functions. The key to the cell differentiations lie in the restrict expression of the specific genes within each type of cells. So the DNA could be tagged or untagged by a small chemical modifications, our sticky rice, or the epigenomes. Therefore, to, to stop the non-essential genes and to turn on the essential genes within a cell. I would like to highlight an interesting research called What Makes Good Rat Mamas. The researcher compared two groups of rat mothers, one that always licked their babies and the other that rarely did so it turned out that when the babies grow up, the mother whose behavior was 
retain and pass on from the one generation to the next one, and so on. Could this be a genetic predispos predisposition? All good moms only infant good moms, or bad mom only infant bad moms? The researcher brought out the clear answer that when the babies would be their, their good mom, they also take the part of the good things too. So it means that if the kids was rat napped from the low licking mother and gave them to the high licking mother, then at the, at the end, the low licking kids became a high licker too. So it means that these things is not influenced by the energy and in, in, in a jet Genetic at all, I'm sorry. Okay, so with a closer look to the DNA, we can see that this thing called the methyl groups was untagged from the DNA of the adopted and the actual high-licking rats, which means that this has nothing to do with genetics at all. This study on the rats has been transposed to the human. So the, if the genes that we will carry out when we were born are actually the cells that we are, retain, are actually carrying today, it means that the lifestyle and environment can greatly affect us. And it also, and even though the epigenetics or epigenomes are sticky, it's not necessarily permanent. We can also clean it out by a healthy lifestyle and a good diet, and also can create a healthy genomes. So if we know how the cells influence us, we can also influence it, and we can fight over it. Thank you. Is there an award for best costume? Yes. <laughs> if there were, you would definitely take home that award. Thank you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to hand things over to the judges now. Their final two minutes to ask away. So this epigenome yeah. um, is actually quite a key thing into like changing all of the mechanism in the body as well? Yes, thank you for the question. It's actually the key to our lives because we also know that when we watch a movie, we only know how the actor and actress works, but we never know who is the director behind. So the epigenomes, which is not well known with the normal like, so people, the epigenome is a director that controls the DNA to turn on and turn off. So like if this DNA is in your liver, and it's the liver's genes, it will work. But if it's some muscle genes in the liver, it will turn off the genes' DNA. No, I, I always, I'm always curious, and I, if I, um, my question is, then how do the, um, the genes in your liver know which one to turn on? And which one to turn off? When, I mean, I, I, I have no idea. But, yeah. It's because um, in the DNA sequence, even though it's the same thing in the whole of our body, it still has different structures and functions. So that's how the epigenomes know. And the key is that these cells recognize these things, so they turn off because it's, not, it's where it belongs. So that's how they know which cells to turn on or turn off. Interesting, very interesting. And maybe my last question has nothing to do with your content. Where did you get your costume? On the lighter <laughs> side of things, where do you get your costume? Um, I am studying at Konkan University. And also, I was comparing my analogy from the epigenetics to like, the sticky rice. And I got this costume from northeastern of Thailand. This is act the actual northeastern costume. Yes, so I think it's fit in with the sticky rice and with the stage. There you go. Very representative of the region she comes from. Yes, and she deserves a big round of applause. You did a wonderful job. Congratulations and good luck to you. You get to go down and rest for just a wee bit, all right? So once again, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Of course, thank you very much to the judges as well. We're going to usher you away and lock you in a private room now, okay? And um, you're going to tally up all the scores and consider it all again. And then you're going to come back here with the final results, the winner of this year's Fame Lab Thailand, and also the first runner up, second runner up. We will know the results very soon. But right now, a big round of applause 
for our judges. เอาละค่ะแขกผู้มีเกียรติทุกๆท,ท่านคะยังเหลือเวลาโหวตกันอยู่นะคะเดี๋ยวอีกสักครู่หนึ่งเราก็จะเชิญฟินอลิสต์ทั้งหมด10ท่านเนี่ยขึ้นมาสัมภาษณ์พิเศษกันบนเวทีแห่งนี้นะคะแล้วก็ยังมีโอกาสโหวตกันได้โหวตกันได้นะคะโดยช่องทางนี้สแกน QR code สำหรับทุกๆท,ท่านที่อยู่ในห้องออเดตอรียมแห่งนี้นะคะส่วนใครที่ชมอยู่ที่บ้านก็จะมี QR code ขึ้นอยู่ที่หน้าจอสแกนแล้วก็โหวตกันได้เลยนะคะชมกันไปแล้วทั้งหมด10ท่านด้วยกันส่วนใครที่ชมอยู่ทาง Facebook Fan Page ไม่ว่าจะเป็น British Council Thailand นะคะหรือว่าช่อง True ปลูกปัญญาก็สามารถที่จะคลิกเข้าไปที่ลิงก์ได้เลยนะคะแล้วก็โหวตกันได้อย่าลืมนะคะ1ท่านสามารถโหวตได้1ครั้งเท่านั้นค่ะเอาละค่ะยังพอมีเวลานะคะหรือว่าอยากจะฟังการสัมภาษณ์นะคะสดสดกันตรงนี้ก่อนแล้วค่อยโหวตก็ได้ยังมีเวลาเราจะปิดการโหวตหลังจากที่เราสัมภาษณ์เฟมลาเบอร์สทั้ง10ท่านตอนนี้ก็วี่บนเวทีพร้อมแล้วนะคะเรียนเชิญ10ท่านนะคะเฟมลาเบอร์ส1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 of you up on stage เรียนเชิญเลยค่ะ Do you have a favorite? All right. p u m ใจมากๆเลยนะคะในตัวทุกๆคนเลยที่เข้ามาสู่รอบนี้สัมภาษณ์กันเลยนะคะรู้สึกอย่างไรบ้างคะณนะตอนนี้ยังตื่นเต้นอยู่หรือเปล่าใครก็ได้นะคะเฟมลาเบอร์คนที่10ก็ได้นะคะไหนๆถือไมอยู่ยังตื่นเต้นอยู่ไหมคะยังตื่นเต้นอยู่เลยคะ่ะทำไมอะคะมันจบไปแล้วเอ่อนาที3นาทีนั้นเพราะว่าแบบนี่เป็นครั้งแรกที่ได้ออกไลฟ์สดทางทีวีค่ะฝากฝากโหวตด,ด้วยนะคะผู้ชมทางบ้านนี่นี่ไงค่ะรู้งานมากๆเลยนะคะเพราะว่ายังไม่ได้ปิดโหวตนะเพราะฉะนั้นใครอยากจะแบบว่าฮะโหวตให้โหวตให้ฉันโหวตให้ฉันเนี่ยนะคะต้องรีบพูดแย่งกันพูดเลยนะคะโอเคอ่ะใครถือไม่เชิญเลยนะคะรู้สึกอย่างไรคะณตอนนี้ตอนนี้รู้สึกตัวเบาค่ะตัวเบาใช่ไหมคะเพรฉันเสร็จแล้วเรียบร้อยแล้วโอเคอ่ะน้องข้างหลังลงมากเลยครับเป็นสามนาทีที่ที่หนักใจมากพอสมควรว่าจะทำออกมาได้ดีหรือเปล่าแต่ตอนนี้ไม่หนักใจแล้วอ่ะสะท้อนกลับไปนะคะช่วงสามนาทีโอกาสนั้นแหละรู้สึกพอใจไหมกับกับลีลาการพรีเซนต์กับกับทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างที่ออกมาโอเคไหมจำไม่ได้เลยค่ะวูบไปเลยวูบไปเลยเพิ่งฟื้นอะใครจําได้บ้างอยากจะถามความรู้สึกว่าพอใจกับผลงานของตัวเองไหมคะอะเร็วใครพูดนะคะสามารถที่จะแบบว่าเรียกคะแนนกันได้นะคะไม่มีกติกาห้ามนะคะค่ะจริงๆแล้วเราคิดว่าทุกคนน่ะคงเป็นเหมือนกันคือตอนที่ตอนที่แข่งจริงเนี่ยมันทําได้แค่ประมาณ 80% เพราะว่าเพราะว่าตอนไฟเปิดปุ๊บคนเยอะมากไม่ได้คิดว่าคนเยอะขนาดนี้อย่างเงี้ยค่ะก็เลยแบบหายไปนิดนึงแต่ว่าก็เป็นประสบการณ์ที่ดีค่ะที่ได้พูดเรื่องที่เราสนใจให้คนอื่นได้ฟังค่ะแค่นี้ก็พอใจละค่ะตรงนี้ก็ส่วนหนึ่งนะคะแต่ว่าอย่าลืมนะคะคนที่ชมอยู่นะคะทาง Facebook Fanpage ของ British Council Thailand นะคะทรูปลูกปัญญาคุณแล้วคุณแอนดรูก็บอกแล้วนะหลายล้านคนมากเลยนะคะที่ reach เขาไปแล้วนะคะเ,เป็นดาราเซเลบริตี้กันไปแล้วนะคะจากเวทีนี้นะคะอ่ะท่านอื่นๆนะคะรู้สึกยังไงพอใจมากกับผลงานตัวเอง3นาทีที่ผ่านไปเดินส่วนตัวก็รู้สึกตื่นเต้นเล็กน้อยแต่ก็พอใจนะครับตอนแรกคิดว่าจะเป็น science communication คือแบบว่าพูดความรู้วิทยาศาสตร์ให้กับทุกๆคนฟังตัวมาจริงนี่กล้องเกลื่งไฟเฟยเต็มไปหมดเลยเคยมาออดิชันครับแต่ก็ดีครับเต็มทำเต็มที่สุดแล้วก็ขอบคุณมากครับ by the way ครับ fl 0 0 9ชื่อเข้มครับลืมขายของอ่ะเมื่อกี้แต่ว่านี่นะคะนี่นะคะ fl 0 0 2ค่ะอ่าเห็นไหมอ่าคุณมีสิทธิ์อย่างตอนนี้เลยนะคะสามารถนะคะแล้วก็ยังเปิดให้โหวตกันอยู่นะคะใครที่กำลังชมอยู่ทางบ้านเนี่ยก็สามารถยังโหวตกันได้อยู่นะคะตอนนี้ QR code หรือว่าจะคลิกเข้าไปที่ลิงก์นะคะเอาละคำถามต่อไปนะคะ
คิดว่าเรามี presentation ที่แบบว่าเราโปรดที่สุดหรือเปล่าเพื่อนเพื่อนอะระหว่างเพื่อนเพื่อนกันเองเนี่ยรู้สึกว่าใครโอเคทำได้โดดเด่นทำได้ดีพูดง่ายๆคิดว่าใครจะชนะก็เออถ้าถามถ้าถามผมผมก็จะบอกว่าของตัวเองดีสุดแต่ว่าแต่แต่ผมผมพูดเล่นนะผมเล่นผมคิดว่าของทุกคนอะก็ก็คือดีกันหมดอะครับก็คือผมอ้าวเขาไม่ให้คุณพูดเลยไงก็คือก็คือดูตั้งแต่รอบออดิชั่นดูตอนเทรนนิ่งก็คือเหมือนกับรอบไฟนอลแล้วโอ้โหทุกคนก็เตรียมตัวกันมาดีหมดถ้าถามว่าผมมีอันไหนที่ผมชอบไหมก็ต้องผมว่าข้างหลังผมเนี่ยผมชอบข้างหลังไหนคะข้างหลังมีห้าชีวิตค่ะถ้าไม่บวชผมก็บวชเขาได้รีเสิร์ชเชอร์ของเรานะคะที่ว่า clean future นะคะถ้าบวชบนหนึ่งดีกว่าครับโอเคอ่าท่านอื่นๆล่ะค่ะอยากจะแสดงความคิดเห็นไหมคะว่าประทับใจของเพื่อนท่านไหนค่ะเอ่อถ้าเกิดสมมติตัดตัวหนูออกไปนะคะอย่าลืมโบท FL 0 0 4นะคะหนูชอบของเอ่ออาจารย์พี่แบงค์ค่ะหนูรู้สึกว่าเขาแบบว่ามี acting ที่ดีแล้วก็เป็นเรื่องที่น่าสนใจอะค่ะแบบว่า stay forever young ค่ะแต่ก็โบท0 0 4เหมือนเดิมนะคะอ่าโอเคเอาละค่ะด้านหลังนะคะมีไหมคะสําหรับผมจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยต้องบอกว่าคือคนที่เข้ามาข้างหลังเนี่ยเราไม่มีโอกาสได้ดูคนข้างหน้าเลยครับดังนั้นเนี่ยจะบอกว่าเราชอบคนไหนเนี่ยยังเป็นไปไม่ได้ครับจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยต้องแบบนั้นต้องบอกว่ากลับไปดูที่บ้านแต่คิดว่าทุกคนน่าจะทําดีกันทุกคนนะครับผมคิดว่าอย่างนั้นนะครับเพราะว่าเราเราเห็นแล้วว่าทุกคนเนี่ยพยายามตั้งใจกันมากนะฮะอ่าเอาละค่ะได้รับประสบการณ์อะไรบ้างจากเวทีนี้ก็สำหรับผมนะครับก็เป็นครั้งแรกที่เราได้สื่อสารวิทยาศาสตร์หรือเรื่องที่เราหลักอะครับให้กับคนดูอะครับมันเป็นครั้งแรกแล้วมไม่รู้จะเป็นโอกาสเดียวหรือเปล่าครับมันก็เป็นเหตุผลที่ทําให้ผมเนี่ยคือไม่สนว่าเราจะชนะไหมครับแต่เราแค่ได้พูดออกมาพูดออกไปอะครับในแนวทางของเราที่ดีที่สุดเท่าที่เราจะทําได้ครับเท่านี้ก็โอเคแล้วครับแต่แต่ว่าไป FL 0ูนย์ห้าก็น่าสนใจเหมือนกันนะฮะ Spirit แรงมาก Spirit ดีมากเลยนะคะแพ้ชนะไม่สำคัญแต่ประสบการณ์ก็ได้มาเยอะแยะเลยค่ะเสริมได้เลยนะคะค่ะก็อย่างในฐานะนักวิทยาศาสตร์นะคะตอนแรกคิดว่าเอ้ยมาสนุกสนุกมาฝึกพูดแต่พอว่าพูดไปพูดมารู้สึกอินมากรู้สึกว่าจริงๆแล้วการที่เขาบอกว่าไอ้นักวิจัยทํางานขึ้นห้องขึ้นหิ่งอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะมันอาจจะเป็นเพราะว่าเราไม่สามารถอธิบายงานเราให้คนทั่วไปเข้าใจได้อย่างดีอะค่ะรู้สึกว่าจริงๆกิจกรรมเนี้ยดีมากมันช่วยเรามากๆเราสึกว่าเราอยากจะทําต่อไปด้วยอะค่ะเห็นด้วยจริงๆเลยนะคะถือว่าเป็นแพลตฟอร์มหนึ่งเนาะเป็นกระบอกเสียงนะคะในสิ่งที่เราทํางานเหน็ดเหนื่อยมานะคะเราอยากจะถ่ายทอดองค์ความรู้นี้ให้กับส่วนมากนะคะนี่เป็นช่องทางที่ดีเยี่ยมเลยอ่ะถ้าอย่างนั้นเนี่ยนะคะอยากจะให้ย้อนกลับไปที่ Master Class กันนิดหนึ่ง Master Class เนี่ยนะคะก็เป็นโอกาสที่ดีเยี่ยมเลยนะคะไทยที่เข้าสู่รอบสุดท้ายเนี่ยก็ไปอบรมกับผู้เชี่ยวชาญเป็นกูรูเลยนะคะด้านเนี่ย Science Communication นะคะได้รับอะไรบ้างค่ะอย่างแรกเลยนะคะท่านวิทยากรเนี่ยค่ะก็จะให้พวกเราแต่ละคนเนี่ยมีการออกไปพรีเซนต์ผลงานของเราคือมีการทำสคริปต์มาแล้วก็ออกไปพูดคราวนี้ก็จะมีอยู่3อย่างอะค่ะก็คือมี what to keep what to change and what to steal ก็คือเหมือนเราได้ reflect ว่าเพื่อนมีข้อดียังไงข้อเสียยังไงแล้วก็อะไรที่เราแบบหูดีมากๆเลยอยากจะ steal เลยเป็นเหมือนหนูรู้สึกว่ามันเป็นการสอนให้ได้เหมือนมาวิเคราะห์กันแบบจริงๆอะค่ะว่าควรจะมองอะไรบ้างในการพรีเซนต์ครั้งหนึ่งอะค่ะโอ้ยนี่เป็นคำแนะนำที่ยอดเยี่ยมมากเลยนะคะสามารถจะไปสติลไปขโมยเทคนิคที่เพื่อนๆใช้มาก็ได้นะคะเพราะฉะนั้นสำหรับใครที่นั่งอยู่ที่ออดิทอเรียมนี้แล้วสนใจอยากจะมาเข้าการแข่งขันเนี่ยปีหน้านะคะเรียนรู้ไว้นะคะว่าเห็นเทคนิคของใครที่ทำแล้วเอออันนี้มันเวิร์กในคนนี้ทำให้เอ่อทุกคนหัวเราะได้เลยอย่างเงี้ยนะคะถือว่าเป็นเคล็ดลับที่น่าจะขโมยแล้วเอามาประยุกต์ใน presentation ของเราค่ะอ่าท่านอื่นๆมีอะไรจะเสริมไหมคะจาก master class เชิญค่ะคือเรารู้สึกว่าอย่างหนึ่งก็คือได้เรื่องของเครือข่ายค่ะเพราะสิบคนเราได้มาฝึกด้วยกันอีกอย่างก็คือเรารู้สึกว่าเราเห็นการพัฒนาของทุกๆคนทั้งในระหว่าง master class แค่2วันแล้วก็เทียบจากวันนั
คือตัวตัวดิฉันเนี่ยเป็นคุณครูเนาะก็อยากจะเป็นตัวแทนของคุณครูยุคใหม่ค่ะก็ก็ก็จะเป็นไม่ไม่ได้แบบใส่แว่นนานาหรือว่าอย่างเงี้ยค่ะทำให้มันน่าสนใจมากขึ้นก็ดีใจที่ได้เป็นหนึ่งในสิบเนาะแล้วก็มันมีจุดหนึ่งค่ะที่เราไปตอนมาสเตอร์คลาสก็คือจะมีเวิร์กช็อปที่ให้เราได้ฝึกกับกล้องด้วยคือตอนจริงอะ่ะเราเราพูดกับคนเป็นอย่างนี้แหละแต่ว่าเราไม่ได้ทราบในตัวเองว่าเวลาเราออกหน้ากล้องเป็นยังไงซึ่งซัพพอร์ตกับเวทีเฟมแลบมากๆเพราะว่าไม่ใช่เฉพาะที่เรามาพูดนะจุดนี้ซึ่งหมายความว่าคุณขึ้นเวทีแนวเราปุ๊บคุณต้องสานต่อในสิ่งที่คุณทําคือเดี๋ยวนี้มันมีช่องทางอะไรเยอะมากที่แบบว่าเราจะเผยแผ่วิทยาศาสตร์เนาะก็จะมีกล้องมี YouTube มีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะก็ทําให้เรามีความเป็นโปรเฟชชั่นอลมากขึ้นอ่ะเอาละค่ะแชร์เทคนิคกันหน่อยสิคะว่าไปฝึกกันอย่างไรมีทิปส์อะไรบ้างสําหรับคนอื่นๆที่สนใจเข้าสมัครโครงการนี้ในปีต่อๆไปเราได้ไปทําการบ้านไปฝึกให้เก่งขึ้นแกร่งขึ้นอย่างไรสำหรับผมก็คือการซ้อมกับตัวเองบ่อยๆนะครับซ้อมหน้ากระจกก็จะทําให้เราสะท้อนเห็นว่าสิ่งที่เราควรปรับคืออะไรแต่สิ่งหนึ่งที่ผมชอบมากที่คุณโจนาธานก็คือคนที่มาอบรมให้เราครับเขาบอกไว้ว่า keep delete the first sentence of your dialogue ให้ลบประโยคแรกของ dialogue ของคุณนะ่ยไปเรื่อยๆเมื่อไหร่ก็ตามที่ลบแล้วมันยัง work แสดงว่าตัดทิ้งได้ประโยคนั้นคือฟุ่มเฟือยนี่ครับผมรู้สึกว่ามันเป็นเทคนิคที่ดีมาก keep delete มันออกไปถ้ามันตัดออกไปแล้วเกิดประโยชน์ทำซะอะไรอย่างเงี้ยครับมันเป็นบางอย่างที่แบบเราไม่อยากจะเสียมันไปอุตส่าห์คิดมันมาแต่แต่บางครั้งมันก็ต้องตัดใจบ้างอะไรอย่างเงี้ยครับผมก็ชอบเทคนิคนี้เก็บไว้นะคะเทคนิคต่างๆค่ะเชิญค่ะเห็นด้วยกับน้องนะคะเรื่อง keep deleting ค่ะคือ3นาทีเนี่ยเป็นความท้าทายมากเพราะว่าบางทีเรามีเรื่องที่เราหลงไหลแล้วแบบเฮ้ยเรารู้ว่ามันมีสมการตรงนี้มันสามารถ go deeper ไปได้แบบเยอะมากๆแต่เราต้องตัดให้จบภายใน3นาทีเนี่ยเป็นความท้าทายมากๆเลยค่ะก็ keep deleting ต่อไปส่วนของเทคนิคของหนูก็คือเหมือนเราต้องมี prime time ของแต่ละวันเป็นช่วงที่แบบไอเดียพุ่งกระฉูดมากเลยอย่างเช่นตัวของหนูเองเนี่ยคือเพิ่งสอบแบบว่าสอบใหญ่มากๆของนักศึกษาแพทย์ทุกประเทศเสร็จก็เหลือเวลาอีกอาทิตย์เดียวแต่ว่าก็ยังแบบรู้ว่าเวลาแค่10นาทีในตอนเช้าเนี่ยเราจะสามารถคิดบทแล้วก็มีไอเดียอะไรพุ่งขึ้นมาได้เราก็หนูก็ไปปั่นจักรยานค่ะ increase heart rate นะคะแล้วก็ได้ไอเดียขึ้นมาด้วยค่ะไปปั่นค่ะเพราะฉะนั้นก็จะมี prime time ของตัวเองค่ะแต่ว่าให้คิดไปเรื่อยๆทุกวันมันจะดีกว่าการที่วิวมี24ชั่วโมงแล้วทําไปเลยตอนนั้นมันจะคิดออกมามันจะไม่ใช่เป็นเฉพาะส่วนครีมอย่างเดียวที่เราได้ออกมามันจะมีส่วนอื่นด้วยเพราะฉะนั้นให้ใช้เวลากับไอเดียให้มันมีความ continue ของมันไปเรื่อยๆค่ะอย่าใจร้อนค่ะ Fame Lover One นะคะมีเทคนิคในการเตรียมตัวอย่างไรบ้างหัวเราะอะไรคะไม่มีคือเรื่อผมเนี่ยก็คือมันมันก็คือเริ่มจากแบบต้องหาเรื่องหัวข้อที่มันสนใจจริงๆอ่ะผมว่าสเต็ปแรกเนี่ยหาหัวข้อเนี่ยมันเป็นหัวเป็นเรื่องที่ยากที่สุดละในการในการเขียนบทเนี่ยคือถ้าหาเริ่มเรื่องได้เนี่ยมันจะไปต่อได้เลยก็แล้วหลังจากนั้นก็คือผมก็คิดว่าเราต้องเหมือนกับซ้อมบ่อยๆต้องคุยต้องไปพูดจริงกับคนอะไรเงี้ยคนดูจริงๆที่อาจจะมี ability ที่อาจจะไม่ค่อยคุ้นเรื่องที่เรามาพูดหรือว่าอาจจะเป็น expert ด้วยตอนนั้นผมก็สัปดาห์ที่แล้วผมก็ไปหาอาจารย์ไปหาเพื่อนแล้วก็มานั่งดูผมพูดแล้วก็โดนคอมเมนต์เละอยู่แล้วก็อะไรอย่างนี้จนกลายเป็นเป็นพูดวันนี้ครับก็ก็คือต้องต้องฝึกซ้อมบ่อยฝึกซ้อมตัวเองฝึกซ้อมคนอื่นนี้ด้วยครับนี่ก็เป็นเทคนิคที่ดีนะคะโดยเฉพาะถ้าใครเนี่ยกลัวการพูดต่อหน้าคนเยอะๆก็อาจจะไปเกณฑ์คนบังคับให้เขานั่งฟังนะคะแล้วก็ให้ฟีดแบ็กกันด้วยเชิญค่ะค่ะสําหรับเราเนี่ยจะต่างกับน้องนิดนึงเพราะว่ารอบที่แล้วเนี่ยเพราะเราเป็นคุณครูเวลาสอนเรื่องยากๆอะค่ะเราเลือกเลือกจากเรื่องที่เราไม่เข้าใจก่อนเพราะว่าถ้าสมมติแล้วเราจําเป็นที่จะต้องสอนก็คือเหมือนกับว่าถ้าเราถ่ายทอดเรื่องที่เราไม่เข้าใจให้คนอื่นเข้าใจได้เนี่ยถือว่าโอเคแล้วอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแล้วก็สําหรับการฝึกซ้อมในรอบไฟนอลเนี่ยก็คือเด็กไม่ค่อยได้เรียนแล้วค่ะช่วงหลังๆอะ่ะ
อะไรอะไรเงี้ยค่ะก็เป็นในที่ที่แบบมีชาวต่างชาติเยอะๆแล้วเราก็พูดขึ้นมาเลยเงี้ยค่ะก็จะเป็นการฝึกว่าเออมี distraction นะมีการพูด public public แบบจริงๆเงี้ยค่ะแต่แต่มันไม่มีไฟอย่างนี้ก็เลยไม่ไม่ค่อยชินเท่าไหร่อย่างเงี้ยค่ะนี่เป็นประเด็นที่น่าสนใจนะคะหลายๆท่านตรงนี้เนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็น native speaker เจ้าของภาษาหรือว่า near native speaker บางท่านอาจจะแบบว่ากลัวว่าไอ้คนอื่นเขาพูดภาษาอังกฤษเก่งกว่าเราอาจจะเป็นภาษีหรือว่า advantage มีมีทิปในเรื่องนี้ไหมคะจริงๆเราต้องบอกก่อนว่าไม่ใช่ native speakers นะคะค่ะตั้งแต่เกิดมาเนี่ยภาษาอังกฤษก็พูดสำเนียงคนไทยๆเลยโอ้ยูวันโกโกโกวิดมีอ่าเขาไม่มีฟ้าๆอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะโอเคจริงๆโอเคไอคอลวิดยูคือพอเราได้มีโอกาสเรียนรู้ภาษาอังกฤษอะค่ะก็อยากจะให้ใช้เวลาในการเรียนรู้เนี่ยไปกับมันคือด้วยความที่เป็นคนที่รักภาษามากและรู้สึกว่าการเรียนภาษาเป็นสิ่งที่มีความสุขแล้วเมื่อใดก็ตามที่เรามีความสุขไปกับการเรียนนะคะก็จะทําให้เราสามารถพัฒนาทักษะทางภาษาอังกฤษได้เสมอเลยไม่ใช่แค่ภาษาเดียวด้วยค่ะนอกจากนี้นะคะก็คือไม่จําเป็นจะต้องสำเนียงเตะก็ได้เพราะว่าสิ่งสําคัญคือสื่อสารให้ทุกคนเข้าใจสิ่งนี้เป็นสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดค่ะ I agree with you very, very much on that point. <laughs> to communicate your feelings across to an audience, and they fully understand you, is key when it comes to learning another language. So don't worry if you cannot speak English like a native speaker. Okay, confident. English is also super good. อันนี้จริงๆค่ะในฐานะที่เป็นครูสอนภาษาอังกฤษนะคะอันนี้เป็นสิ่งที่เน้นในตัวลูกศิษย์ตลอดเวลาเลยนะคะ English for communicative purposes and then you're fabulous and there is absolutely nothing wrong with English. It actually brings out the beauty of us being Thai as well because there's English, there's um, the um, Tagalog English, you know, and all that. So why not English? มีอะไรจะเสริมไหมคะคือถ้าพูดหมวนจะเราจะพูดเยอะมากนะแต่ว่าเรื่องนี้นี่ไม่ไม่ไม่ได้อ่ะต้องพูดจริงๆเพราะว่าคือจริงๆแล้วเราอยู่ในตำแหน่งของคือเป็นการแชร์มากกว่าเนาะเพราะว่าทํางานที่โรงเรียนนานาชาติแล้วปกติเนี่ยเขาก็เป็นที่รู้กันอยู่แล้วว่าเขาไม่ได้รับคุณครูคนไทยเข้าอยู่ในตําแหน่งของคุณครูต่างชาติอยู่แล้วเนี่ยค่ะการรู้ภาษาเหมือนกับว่าการพูดเนี่ยเราเราเขาเรียกว่าเรามีความมั่นใจที่จะพูดทําให้เหมือนเราเปิดหน้าต่างอะค่ะทุกคนมีความเก่งเท่ากันหมดแต่เหมือนกับว่าถ้าคุณมีมีความสามารถด้านภาษาเหมือนคุณเปิดประตูออกไปแล้วแล้วคุณมีโอกาสที่จะสร้างมากขึ้นอย่างเงี้ยค่ะน้องเ,ออเรามีความรู้สึกว่าคนไทยด้วยกันเนี่ยเอาจริงๆจากประสบการณ์ซึ่งทุกคนก็คงคง,คงผ่านมาเหมือนกันเวลาคนไทยพูดภาษาอังกฤษเนี่ยจะมีความจัดจะแบบเออคนนี้พูดดีไปทําไมต้องพูดดีเงี้ยค่ะเราลองคิดเราลองคิดกลับการว่าเวลาที่เราฟังคนฝรั่งพูดภาษาไทยเนี่ยเรามีความรู้สึกภูมิใจที่เขาพูดภาษาเราฝรั่งก็เหมือนกันค่ะเวลาเราพูดภาษาไทยอย่างน้อยเราฝึกพูดเขาเราพูดภาษาเขาเขาพูดได้แค่ภาษาเดียวนะคะบางคนน่ะแต่ว่าเวลาเราพูดอ่ะเขาก็รู้สึกเหมือนเราค่ะไม่ต้องกังวลเรื่องภาษาเหมือนที่ทุกคนได้บอกไปคือพูดไปเลยแกมมาอย่าพึ่งตามมาทีหลังได้แต่ว่าอย่ามาอยู่ที่ว่าคุณอยากพูดหรือเปล่าแค่นั้นเองถ้าคุณพังกำพังกแพงตรงนี้ได้ you are done you can get it That's right. Reach for the stars. All right. A big round of applause for our ten finalists. Got some f o r m u l a dang dang. Another one. Woo woo woo. Woo woo woo. ปีนี้เนี่ยนะคะเฟมหลับประเทศไทยเข้าสู่ซีซั่นที่3แล้วแล้วปีนี้เนี่ยถือว่าพิเศษจริงๆมีไฮไลท์ที่แบบว่าวูวูวูวมากๆเลยเพราะว่าปีนี้เนี่ยเรามีแบรนด์อัมบาสเดอร์ด้วยนะคะเรามีแขกรับเชิญพิเศษกับ What? What? ใช่แล้วค่ะเรามีแบรนด์อัมบาสเดอร์นะคะ Girl Group น้องใหม่ที่มาแรงที่สุดขณะนี้เลย You know who she is. Let's bring her up on stage, นะคะเชอร์ปราง B N K 48. Woo! ขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับแบรนด์อัมบาสเดอร์นะคะเชอร์ปราง B N K 48, นะคะแล้วเดอะวินเนอร์จากเฟมแลบปีนี้นะคะโชคดีจริงๆเลยจะควงแขนเชอร์ปรางเนี่ยนะคะไปที่สหราชอาณาจักรนะคะไปร่วมมหกรรมวิทยาศาสตร์เชลเนมไซเอนซ์เฟสติวัลเชอร์ปรางปีเอ็นเคโที่เอไปด้วยค่ะอยากจะชนะกันหมดทุกคนเลยละสิ
เอาละค่ะขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับอีกครั้งหนึ่งดีกว่าค่ะรู้สึกเป็นยังไงบ้างคะรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติอย่างมากเลยค่ะว่าแบบทุกเรื่องน่าสนใจหมดเลยเชอ enjoy กับการที่ได้ฟังทุกทุกคนพูดมากๆเลยค่ะทุกคนเก่งมากเลยค่ะสุดยอดเพราะรู้สึกว่าตัวเองทําไม่ได้แบบนี้เก่งนะคะเก่งแล้วเขาเก่งขึ้นเรื่อยๆเลยมีท็อปปิกไหนหัวข้อไหนที่สะดุดแล้วที่แบบว่าสนใจเป็นพิเศษไหมคะเอาจริงๆหลายหัวข้อมากเลยค่ะเพราะว่าเหมือนกับแต่ละอันเชอไม่เคยรู้มาก่อนแล้วไม่เคยรู้ว่าตอนนี้รีเสิร์ชของเราไปถึงที่ไหนแล้วหรือประมาณไหนแล้วมีอะไรที่ใหม่เข้ามาบ้างถ้าแบบสมมติเรื่องยังเกอร์เนี่ยอันนี้สนใจเป็นพิเศษมากเลยว่าแบบเออเราก็อยากสเตย์ยังเกอร์ไปแต่ก่อนอะไรอย่างเงี้เป็นหัวข้อโปรดของหลายๆท่านนะคะเมื่อกี้นี้อาจารย์นั่นนะคะก็ก็ก็อยากจะถามคําถามเพิ่มเติมเหมือนกันนะคะไปถามหลังใหม่ได้นะเรียนเชิญเชอปรางโดยเฉพาะเลยใช่ไหมคะโอเคถ้าสมมุติว่าเชอปรางได้มีโอกาสเข้าการแข่งขันเนี่ยคิดว่าจะเลือกหัวข้ออะไรคะโอ้ยตอนเอาจริงๆการคิดหัวข้อที่ที่เขาตูบอกนะคะก็เป็นอะไรที่ยากจริงๆค่ะก็คือตอนนี้คือได้เพิ่งได้รับโจทย์นี้เมื่อเมื่อไม่นานนี้แล้วก็นั่งคิดระหว่างที่ฟังทุกๆท่านพูดหรือนําเสนออยู่เนี่ยเชอก็เลยคิดมาว่าเออถ้าประเด็นที่เชอสามารถทําได้ตอนนี้และคิดว่าเป็นสิ่งสําคัญก็คือเรื่องของการที่คอมมิวนิเคชันเรื่องไซแอนออกไปหรือการพูดมันออกไปเพราะฉะนั้นอาจจะเป็นเรื่องของการว่าทําไมเราถึงต้องคอมมิวนิเคชันข้อมูลความรู้ knowledge ต่างๆออกไปมากขึ้นเรื่อยๆค่ะเพราะว่าอันนี้ก็เป็นสิ่งหนึ่งที่ทําให้เชิญมาได้มาทํางานตรงนี้รวมถึงการใช้เรียกว่าไงความมีชื่อเสียงหรอหรือว่าแฟนๆทุกคนที่ให้ความสนใจในเรื่องตรงนี้มาพี่จะช่วยผลักดันให้เรื่องตรงนี้ไปไกลมากยิ่งขึ้นค่ะก็ต้องขอบคุณน้องเชิญปรางมากๆเลยนะคะรู้ว่าคิวแน่นเอียดมากเลยแต่ว่ามาร่วมงานกับเราในวันนี้รู้สึกว่าข้างๆนั้นเขาตื่นเต้นไม่ไม่ใช่ค่ะข้างๆด้านด้านด้านด้านขวามือเนี่ยใกล้ๆตรงนี้เนี่ยแหละค่ะนั่นแหละค่ะเขาเข้าใจว่าเขาก็แบบว่ายังยังโอเคอยู่นะคะเขาเขารู้สึกว่าจะตื่นเต้นมากๆเลยมีอะไรจะฝากถึงถึงถึงเชิญปรางไหมคะฝั่งนู้นอ่ะก็ครับผมก็ชื่นชอบครับชื่นชอบแล้วก็ติดตามผลงานเขามาตลอดนะครับก็อยากให้ก็อยากให้สารต่องานนี้ต่อไปครับรวมไปถึงการศึกษาวิทยาศาสตร์ให้ผู้คนเข้าใจครับก็เชื่อว่าเชอปาเนี่ยเป็นหนึ่งในแรงในกําลังสําคัญของพวกเราครับที่ช่วยให้วิทยาศาสตร์เนี่ยมีความน่าสนใจมากขึ้นแล้วก็ทําให้ผู้คนนะครับเข้าถึงวิทยาศาสตร์มากยิ่งขึ้นด้วยขอบคุณมากครับโอ้โหมีกําลังใจจากน้องชาปางนี่พูดได้ดีเยี่ยมมากๆเลยนะคะนั่นน่ะอ่าเอาละค่ะสุดท้ายนี้อยากจะให้ฝากถึงคนที่คิดว่าวิทยาศาสตร์มันยากมันน่าเบื่อสำหรับเนิร์ดเท่านั้นเพราะว่าชาปางเองเนี่ยก็อยู่ในสายนี้อยู่เหมือนกันใช่ไหมคะใช่ค่ะเชอเป็นคนหนึ่งที่ชื่นชอบวิทยาศาสตร์มากแล้วก็ดีใจมากๆที่มีโอกาสได้พักดันวิทยาศาสตร์ให้กับคนรุ่นใหม่ๆหรือใครที่ยังคิดว่ามันเป็นเรื่องยากความจริงแล้วก็นี่แหละค่ะเพราะมันเป็นเรื่องยากเราถึงต้องทําให้มันง่ายและมีการคอมมิวนิเคชันหรือว่ามี science speaker science communicator เพิ่มขึ้นเรื่อยๆรวมถึงการได้ส่งมันออกไปให้กับทุกๆคนได้รับรู้แล้วก็มาเรียนรู้ค่อยๆเรียนรู้จากความง่ายๆมีคนอธิบายเพิ่มความยากเข้าไปเรื่อยๆทําให้เราแบบต่อยอดความรู้แล้วมันจะพัฒนาไปสิ่งที่อะไรใหม่ๆมากขึ้นเรื่อยๆในทุกๆวันค่ะโอเคขอเสียงปรบมือให้น้องเชอร์ปราง BNK48 อีกครั้งหนึ่งนะคะรวมถึง f i n a l i s t ทั้ง10ด้วยนะคะเอาละค่ะเดี๋ยวอีกสักครู่หนึ่งเราก็จะมาทราบผลกันแล้วนะคะสำหรับช่วงนี้เรียนเชิญทุกๆท,ท่านนะคะไปพักผ่อนกันสักครู่หนึ่งแล้วเดี๋ยวจะเชิญกลับมาฟังผลกันอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะคะขอเสียงปรบมืออีกครั้งหนึ่งค่ะแล้วก็ต้องขอขอบคุณอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะคะน้องเชอร์ปราง BNK48 ค่ะมาสร้างสีสันให้กับงานของเราในปีนี้ค่ะเรียนเชิญค่ะ All right now I would like to invite all of you now to kindly make your way backstage to see ฟังภาษาไทยไม่ได้นะคะถนัดภาษาอังกฤษมากกว่านะคะ All right that's super that's working out. we are now going to find out who the people's choice
to stage right here. How was it? Was yeah. it? Very How, tough. Was Very it tough. getting yeah. tougher and tougher and tougher each year? Tougher. <laughs> it's tougher yeah. each year. All right. Um, so, but um, pretty much clear now. We do have a winner. Yeah, we have to. Hello. So we have to pick the right one. You know, the best performer for today. Mm -hmm. It's really tough for yeah, us. Really. You know, we have a lot of discussions, and we just finished it just a moment ago when right. we walked out here. Right. Right, and I see you're sweating. Your uh. forehead is like really. It needs a bit of uh. a right. Okay, <laughs> but hard. you're still yeah. standing tall. That's good. I think, yeah. I think we could have spent another hour in yeah. discussing. Actually, one more hour. We can't wait that I long. Mean, it was just about three, and who was the best of the three? You know, the most of them could have won. Okay, so really tough. Three favorites, and they really had to talk it out. Um, did you have a favorite? Put aside the winner, but did you have a favorite topic? Topic. I, you, I know what yeah. yours was. It was the one, <laughs> the tips on being young, right? That one's really sticking. Did you have a favorite, Dr. O? I have Dr. a couple. O? I, have, I yeah? have a few, actually. What, what I really like to talk, especially for the science talk, mm -hmm. it was something that we can you know, see the wow factor in there. Mm -hmm. Something that we can learn new things, you know, from the talk and we get the right key message. So mm -hmm. I think there's a, several good talks right here. Yeah. Right, okay. And, the way, you know, sorry, sorry. And, uh, and actually I'm very impressed because the, this year contestants, their English is very good. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm very proud of the next generation of um, Thai scientists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I like is that uh, everyone knows so well about what they are talking about. You know, they, they make me move and there are many things I like to follow up. Yeah, I, I probably think of having my teeth breast, <laughs> you ah, know. Yeah. Right, the one on orthodontics. Yes, Kun Andrew, you had something to say? You wanted to add something? There was a lot, lot of charisma out here today. Fantastic presentation skills. I mean, they were all good in the heat a month mm. ago, but they've really progressed in the last month as well. And right. They, they really made, made yeah. the subjects interesting. I have to agree. Yeah. Any recommendations for those interested in competing next year? Well, I, I, I think one of the, the things is, you know, you pick the right topic mm. and make it really the really interesting topics right there and try to, you know, talk it out, make it easy for people to understand. And, you know, add a little bit of how to, why is that, and this is the science that we're asking. And if you have that, you know, we can learn, not just only you learn, but the community can learn. So topic choice is extremely crucial. And make the complex simple. Mm -hmm. You know, when there are very, some very deep, very complex um, subjects out there, but people made it simple yeah. and understandable really simplify things. Mm -hmm. it, it might be really difficult, mm -hmm. but you just have to find a way to really simplify it and so that the audience and the general audience will be able to grasp the concept as well. That's extremely important as well. Final words. And avoid jargons. Usually we have um, a lot of technical terms in science. If you can get your friends or your families to listen to your talk and your mom can listen and then finish, you know, wait until you finish and then you can be successful. You know, right. yeah. That's, really That's a good tip right there. So get your mom, your siblings, your friends to listen. If they understand it fully, then you're going the right way. Mm -hmm. A big round of applause for their hard work, the three judges <laughs> for this year's Fame Lab 2018. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right. We are now going to bring out all the 10 finalists because we will announce the first prize and that is the popular vote. So, once again, bringing out all the finalists out on the stage. Big round of applause for all the finalists. Once again, People's Choice Award. I'd like to invite up on stage the representative of NASDA, Dr. 
ชดามาศทุวะเศรษฐกุล up on stage please to do the honors in presenting the winner of this year's People's Choice Award with the prize and of course the winner came from your vote from those of you here at this auditorium those of you at home or out somewhere on Facebook and now ladies and gentlemen the winner now I have to invite another gentleman up on stage, Dr. Rowin Ra Wee Wong, the president of the National Science Museum, to kindly make his way up here as well. So let's give him a big round of applause as he makes his way on stage. All righty, I'm so nervous. You can tell I'm nervous. I'm mixing up my script a little bit. That's how nervous I am. Ladies and gentlemen, People's Choice Award for the year 2018 goes to Fame Labber number. Drum roll. Presenting the winner with the plaque there, the Executive Vice President of the National Science and Technology Development Agency, and also thanking the President of the National Science Museum for being with us today, Dr. Rowin Ra Wee Wong. Congratulations, you all have voted. And that's Miss Popular Vote there, People's Choice Award. All right. Thank you very much. And once again, congratulations. All right. Without further ado, let's now move on to the second runner-up award. Mr. Andrew Glass, British Council, Thailand Director. If you can kindly make your way on stage, please, to do the honors in awarding the second runner-up with their prize. Now, second runner-up goes to... Fame Labber number six, ladies and gentlemen, number six. Big congratulations to you. You did a fantastic job. Thank you very much, Kun and uh, Drew. Okay, look straight there. Big smile on your face. Congratulations. Let's now move on to the first runner up. Welcoming on stage. Dr. Kantima Kunton Ayutthaya, please, Executive Assistant to the Chairman of the Executive Committee of True Corporation PLC, on stage now to present the plaque to the first runner-up. And it's a thumbs up here from her to all the finalists. Ladies and gentlemen, first runner-up, please step forward, Fame Labber number four.
Congratulations to you, you deserve it. An amazing job you did, the judges were impressed. And thank you very much indeed to you, Dr. Kantima Kunchon Na Ayutthaya, Executive Assistant to the Chairman of the Executive Committee of True Corporation. Thank you very much indeed for your kind support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the final top award for this evening, the winner. I would like to invite the Secretary to the Minister of Science and Technology up on stage, please. Let's welcome Kun Suwani Kaman once again, center stage here to present the winner of this year's Fame Lab Thailand 2018. The winner goes to Fame Labber number one. Congratulations to you, you get to represent Thailand and take it to the international level and you get to go to the UK, the Sheldon Science Festival, of course. Nong Sha Prang, BNK48 is coming along too! Okay, center stage, center stage on the count of three, raise it in the air, all right? Three, two, one, woo! Congratulations to you. Now on behalf of the British Council, we'd like to thank our partners for their kind support. Thank you, the Ministry of Science and Technology. Thank you, the National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy Office, the National Science and Technology Development Agency, the National Science Museum, True Corporations, and the Standard. Thank you so much for your support. See you again next year, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Big congratulations. Now, if you can take center stage there, inviting the judges back on stage for the group photograph. And also inviting the secretary to the Minister of Science.